of singers. We make music in great concert halls. We make music in places of worship. We make music in the classroom, and we make music in the streets. An estimated 56 million Americans sing in a choir. One out of every six people participates in an organized ensemble. And for the first time in a century, that has been taken away. Even a pandemic can't stop us from singing. We are finding a way. We've created specialized masks, engaged in deep conversations and studies. We have forged new technologies, all so we can continue to make music. What is it about singing together that inspires the... And we're live, broadcasting from the footsteps of New York City. This is Music Matters with Jason Tram. We're delighted that you can join us for our unique podcast community, where we explore the issues and challenges in the music world as seen through the eyes of distinguished colleagues. Please remember to like and subscribe our, to our channel. Hit that bell icon for the most up-to-date information on upcoming guests and topics. Like and share our videos on social media. You can find us in the usual places on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and all the rest. So please join us there. And to join our email list, you can go to www.jasontram.net for our past 105 episodes and also all of our upcoming guests. We draw guests from the classical, from the, um, from the contemporary music community, and also from Broadway and many, many others. Here on Music Matters, we tell the story of musical innovation during the time of COVID. We're delighted you can join us today. We have a wonderful uh, documentary to talk about, and we have a distinguished group of colleagues. We've got Jerry Blackstone, the artistic director of the project, Brian Gauckel, the filmmaker, and Matthew Workman, the executive director. And the documentary is called Choral Singing in America, Nurturing the American Soul. So welcome, gentlemen. So glad you can join us today. It's a Thank great you. pleasure. Good to be here. Why don't we start with introducing the members of the team and each talk about your, but give us through a journey of who you are, what you bring to this dream team. Well, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Um, I'm Jerry Blackstone. I was for many years uh, the director of choral activities at the University of Michigan um, and uh, have conducted a lot of groups in various places and um, retired in 2018. Uh, and uh, the opportunity presented itself to be involved in, in this project. And so I serve as artistic director of the project, which means that I sort of work with these great team members in, in developing our vision, developing our plan uh, and what we want to accomplish. Thank you, Jerry. How about Brian? Sure, it's funny, I was gonna to defer to Matt, but I'll go. Um, I, I happen to be from the state of Michigan. I grew up in Ludington, Michigan, and I was fortunate enough to I uh, have my um, local high school choir director mention Interlochen. And so in my 1992, I went to the Interlochen Arts Camp to the Allstate program, and that's where I met Jerry for the first time. Um, fell in love with singing in choirs. I ended up going to the Interlochen Arts Camp, in, uh, Arts Academy, as well as the Cincinnati Conservatory of Music, where I studied um, undergraduate vocal performance. So I've kind of pretty strong background in, in making music. And um, I worked for Apple Computer for about eight years and um, specifically within uh, teaching others how to use professional applications like video editing, audio editing, things of that nature. Uh, 2004 in Washington State, we started a video production company. And um, this is like the nickel version of all of this, but moved to um, Atlanta in 2014 where my wife's a, a college professor in Rome, Georgia and um, started another company here. And it was about 2017 that I reached out to Jerry. It had been a number of years since we had last chatted and we um, 
engaged in a documentary project about his final year there at the University of Michigan, as well as choral music and what it takes to be a young, uh, up and coming choral director and what it means, just, just about choir in general. And that's kind of what led to this project. I won't spill too much about that, but um, that's kind of where we are, uh, pandemic and hits. And here we are together making this film. And it's just been uh, an amazing, amazing process so far. Thank you so We're much, Brian. Yeah, and Matthew, tell us about your background, Matthew. Uh, let's see. Well, Brian, by the way, I'm used to going last with a last name like Workman. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I founded National Concerts in 2018, and we had uh, successful performances at Carnegie Hall uh, right leading up until the pandemic. Uh, then we hit pause. Um, I caught wind of this documentary, and <clears throat> Brian and I actually go back to interlocking days where we sang for uh, Jerry Blackstone. Uh, fast forward, uh, Brian, I actually commissioned to be my uh, uh, projection designer for our performances at Carnegie Hall. Uh, so this was very coincidental. Um, by the way, if any of you have an opportunity to catch uh, his documentary uh, on uh, Jerry's last year at University of Michigan, it's called We Are the Music Makers. It's fantastic, and Brian uh, is extremely talented. Um, and one of his secrets is his uh, lovely bride. <laughs> That's right, it's a secret weapon. Um, so I reached out to Jerry and Brian. Uh, I, I uh, offered to join as executive producer uh, since uh, we're on we're on hold at Carnegie Hall, and uh, I've just uh, been able to bring a lot to the project as far as um, just organizing logistics, a lot of moving parts, uh, assistance with fundraising and uh, over overseeing the development committee, uh, being involved with the uh, advisory panel and uh, so many other things. It, it's uh, oh, just looking back and the it's, it's only been a short few months, I suppose. Uh, a lot has been accomplished and Wonderful. Now that we've met the team, how did you decide to, for, when, would, when did the concept of this, uh, this, this wonderful documentary, when did that begin to gel and whose idea was it and, and how did that unfold? Yeah, that's something for Brian. I'll start and then I'll hand it to Jerry. Um, as I was mentioning, 2020, I was reaching out to the current uh, director of the American Choral Directors Association, Tim Sharp. And I was um, wanting to share my film with him at the time. There weren't a lot of choral music documentaries out there. And so I wanted to share it with him. And we ended up having about a 40 minute conversation. And one of my questions for him was, what other content do you feel um, is a worthy cause to spend your time on? And, and he said, you know, no, someone has never really tried to tackle a documentary on the history of American choral music. Um, Jerry and I, because the film had been in contact quite a bit, I mean, it seems like at least once every other week or so, we were on the phone with each other about just random things. And um, I know that Jerry's schedule had just gotten canceled not too uh, long before that. And I said, what do you think about this idea? In fact, I, I had zero, zero plans of saying, let's do a film together. I just literally just threw it out there saying, what do you think about this? He said, uh, this excites me. And so I said, okay. <laughs> and we, we literally, from there, we just started brainstorming. And I'll, I'll pass it on to Jerry and, on where the concept and um, where, where his, his life well spent in the choral world has uh, led to where we are today. Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, we uh, have talked so often, and, and I, you know, having worked with a lot of students over the years, I've been surprised at how, uh, well, surprised at a lot of things, but one of the things I'm surprised about is how little they know about, for instance, the icons. You can, to a student today, say, oh, Robert Shaw would have done, and they'll say, Robert Shaw, uh, or Roger Wagner, or House Parker, or, you know, so, uh, lots of those people that, that you think, doesn't everybody know Margaret Hillis? You know, so, and people don't. And so I was really interested in thinking, how can we build some information about those icons and, and what led to those great symphony choruses, for instance? Um, they didn't just happen. And, and how, how we can do that in an interesting and storytelling way. And then Tim Sharp said uh, something to us one day. He said, you know, uh, choral music is really regional. 
um, you don't re people don't really know what other choirs maybe even in their own city are singing or, or it, go next door to the next town you don't know anything and if you go just across the state line you don't know anything about what's happening in choral music what and the only time we know something is every two years we have a national conference and we hear choirs from around the country so i thought this would give us an opportunity to be a little less regional to see the bigger picture not only what's happening now and we are focusing on who sings not necessarily the composers who've written the music that they sing or necessarily only the conductors but who sings in this choirs and and why do they sing in this choir in these choirs and and what's the broad incredibly varied choral landscape in america today well it's what, what a what a great topic and it's so important um do you think that because choral singing is so omnipresent in america that in the in the, the, in the promo it said that one in every six americans sings in an organized choir do you think that it's such woven into the fabric that people just always assumed it was there it's interesting that that hasn't been the story hasn't been told and i wonder why I, I absolutely wonder why. And um, it's a little underground. I think it's a lot of people do it, but they don't necessarily talk about it uh, a lot. It's it's my my gift to myself on Tuesday nights or my gift to myself on Monday nights. Or I did it in school and it was fun in school, but then I went to college and I didn't have an opportunity to do it anymore. And so uh, it's it's quite remarkable. And, and one of the elements that we hope we can build into this is an advocacy element. How can we engender in people who need to support this art an understanding of what really is involved in singing together? At most, the vast majority of, of singers are not professional singers. They're not even necessarily hyper-trained musicians or hyper-trained singers. It's that very best elements of amateur that we encounter and, and to communicate the joy and the dedication that those people have and the legacy that we have received and that we want to give to our future generations. Such a grand topic and such uh, such noble goals. Let's dig into the, the nitty gritty of this. How do you plan something so massive? You, it, uh, the, the choral world encompasses worship choirs, universities, elementary schools, communities, houses of worship, all of these different constituencies. How do you adequately um, discuss all of these? Mm. Brian, you want to talk about that? Yeah. Well, you, you know, it's funny that you asked that question. When we got started, um, I had Jerry just make a list. And I said, let's let's, let's just make a list of, of any and everything that we think needs to be in this film. And if you could write it on my wall, it would start on the side here. And <laughs> it would go all the way to the bottom. <laughs> and, and, you know, really, I, I, we keep saying this, but one of the most challenging aspects of this film will be what has to get left out at some point in time there are other we're talking i mean for example like performances like whole performances it's it's difficult to have a documentary and have a number of six minute pieces play without anything else happening and so we're trying to figure out okay how can we use this in an educational way let's just say that a piece gets referenced and then you hear 30 to 50 seconds of it there'll be something that will point to a website where someone can then go and listen to that entire performance or things of that nature maybe a book that will accompany the film but from the very beginning um, we understand that we are the three folks who have a deep passion for this, um, but we more importantly have the time to accomplish it right now. There are many, many people who are, are deeply passionate about this topic, and we're trying to include as many of those voices as we possibly can. And so we started to develop uh, a team. And um, Jerry, I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit, but I mean, part of part of how we're really trying to move forward with this is not just come up with it on our own, but we have a team of folks that are, are aiding us. So I'll let Jerry speak about our, our panel and how we came up with those folks. Yeah, we have a panel of approximately 30 uh, advisors, um, leading uh, choral musicians, leading um, conductors, singers, uh, scholars, um, uh, leaders in the arts who have uh, agreed to serve as sort of our our ears and our eyes and and our uh, the people that we can go to and say have we left anything out have we spent too much time on this what do you think about this should we include more of this and they have been very thoughtful and very helpful as we have uh, been working to put this um, 
the many pieces together uh, to make it a logical unit. I have a question for Brian. How how are you planning to uh, to divvy this up? How many how many episodes are in the, going to be in the series, and how long might the episodes be? Yeah. Early on in this process, uh, like I say, we just had a long list of all the things that could be included, and that is a challenge. Um, Jerry, I believe that it, it was David um, Devini. Mm -hmm. Am I saying yeah. his name correctly? De I didn't know if it was Devini or Devini. Devini. Um, yeah, he is at uh, Westchester University, and he had a fabulous idea about how he might organize something like this. And um, we, we said, well, how do you feel if we run with that? <laughs> and he was okay with it. Uh, but he had an idea about dividing up choral singing in America into three main categories. Uh, singing in the community uh, and community opportunities, uh, singing within the academy, uh, and also singing uh, within worship. Th those are kind of the three main places that organized choral singing happens. Um, so our attempt is going to be an episode on each of those as well as a separate piece that may even stand alone on its own at this point um, that could serve as a choral ad advocacy piece that you can um, hand over to people that need to hear how important music is and what it's doing for people and what it's doing for the brain. And uh, we have, uh, we were fortunate enough to have uh, Dr. Sanjay Gupta uh, interview for this next trailer you're going to see here in March. And he talks a little bit about the importance of singing in the brain. And so, um, we have a great start and we have a great skeleton for the film now as soon as we're finished with our up-and-coming promotional trailer uh we're going to hit the the ground hard running and trying to develop the the nuts and the bolts and the ins and the outs and actually getting scripts written for each one and figuring out who we need to interview and which choirs are going to be involved and who's even singing and that we can actually film so we've got our work cut out for us and that's part of why the film uh is most likely at this point looking to be released in 2023 so that was my next keep, question excellent 2023 yeah, we need to keep people's attention here for the next year and a, and it's already we're like a quarter of the way through 2021 so i mean 2023 will be here before you know it yes it will and the one thing we know about choral singing it will be there we are res a resilient community and uh, that people oh. have that need to sing always and i think it's i think that covid while mm -hmm. it's been such so devastating will only get, strengthen our desire to make this art form more vital mm -hmm. i agree jared or matt did you have anything you wanted to add to that as well about just the length of time it's going to take to make it or i, I don't know if that I mean, that was a pretty simple answer as far as 2023, but I mean, we have our eyes set basically at the next national ACDA conference. It is a hope to premiere the, the, the for show. If we can get it done sooner, we'd love to, but um, it'd be nice to have it now for people to watch, for example. <laughs> Imagine there's some work to do before that. Uh, yeah. So uh, how about the filming? Um, uh, are you planning the filming now? Or are you starting to think about, uh, when, do you, when do you have a plan to start the filming and the, all that part of the process? Sure. Um, we've already interviewed um, in person about three folks, and then we've had a number of um, of conductors and uh, composers and educators send us videos as well during this time. Um, we had some pretty grand interview travel plans between January and March that just didn't happen with COVID, of course. Uh, but that's our initial step, is is we're, we're going to get as many interviews out of the way as possible during this time, is really most of our scripting and our content will come from what we learn through these interviews and the people that we're going to talk to. We anticipate that a majority of the choral filming is going to happen as, as soon as we can, maybe summer, maybe fall, hopefully fall, uh, through the end of 2021 into 2022 as needed. So. Those are the goals. What has the response been from the choral leadership you've approached? And uh, knowing how everyone is missing, we're all missing our communities, have people been just uh, dying to just, just tell their story? Mm, the response has been overwhelming. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, dedicate, dedicated people to help us uh, make this a reality, uh, to volunteer their time um, and, uh, and resources. It's, it's been terrific, a lot of support. Um, I'm sure, Jerry, you've probably heard offline too from people, I mean, and from all different circles. I mean, professional singers, conductors, composers. I mean, you think of all of the stakeholders involved in ensemble singing. 
uh, it's a lot of people out there and we we uh, we have a, an initial promotional teaser that we put out i think right after thanksgiving and how many views are we at now over a quarter of a million i think right brian I haven't checked it in a couple of weeks, so we'll, but yes, that that's an older number. Yes, <laughs> I kind of stopped watching because I was, <laughs> but it's been overwhelming. So, what do you want people to take away with this? A project of this this magnitude. What do you want people to take away? That's the most important things. What do you want people to walk away um, mm -hmm. to think about after they watch this important documentary? I hope they say, "I had no idea." I had no idea that that there were so many choirs, that there were so many options for choral singing, that there were so many people singing. There were so many people that were deeply involved in finding fulfillment in it. And I had no idea that, that it didn't just always exist in America. That, you know, modern choral singing, uh, as Tim Sharp said to me one day, he said, you know, choirs are better today than they've ever been. And he's absolutely right. Uh, and uh, that, you know, 50 years ago, 75 years ago, it sounded very different. And uh, you could find recordings of choirs. I mean, you know, when I was young, when I was young, <laughs> the only LPs you could find were of the major core works, you know, the Brahms Requiem, Verdi Requiem, those sort of things. But you could find you know, recordings of smaller works. People did those, but they were just kind of in-house sort of things. I hope people hear lots of different possibilities and say, I had no idea. That's fantastic. We've certainly seen a blossoming of repertoire, and uh, especially for chamber choir, a cappella, the, the genre of a cappella music uh, oh. at the college level has exploded in a way like the pentatonics has raised awareness for us. So we've seen such an incredible flowering of choral music in the last couple of decades, and uh, it's been quite exciting no to watch. And this, this pandemic fantastic. certainly doesn't help. So one of the biggest thing that I hope we, we uh, comes from this is uh, an opportunity for advocacy that people walk away and say, uh, you know, I need to get back involved in singing. I miss it so much. Or, um, you know, reach out to your local um, community ensemble or uh, university or school and, and get involved and support them in any way you can. Um, recruitment is going to be vital. It, it, a lot of things need to happen to get back to where we were. Um, but uh, there's so many opportunities for advocacy. You, know, you have such uh, a, heard, oh, sorry, Jerry. I Go was ahead. just going to say, we've heard from so many people who have said things like, I found my family there. I found my tribe there. I found the people that I fit in with, that, that I like, that liked me. Yeah. And, and that, I hope that that will in turn engender people to say, how can we help? Mm -hmm. how, what, what, can, what do you need? Uh, because that we do have needs, and we uh, it, the uh, Anton Armstrong said the other day he had uh, just guest conducted a, a special needs choir. He said I took more from that than they ever took from me. That's exactly right. I hope we see those. Yeah. I hope we see those opportunities. You mentioned some of the challenges, and we all know that um, you have the most noble mission that imaginable. And everyone here is, we're getting lots of great comments on the chat, and people are uh, voicing their support, how excited they are to watch this come together. And from I noticed from all over the, the country, it's really quite wonderful. What are some of the challenges that each of you in your own respective roles have faced? <laughs> I want to be last. Are there any challenges? <laughs> None yeah. whatsoever. No. Uh, the challenges. Let's see. Well, <clears throat> the challenges uh, are. By the way, we let Matt keep keep track of him. That's part of his skill set is keeping <laughs> track of the challenges. Yeah. That's why Jerry and I are just mumming up here. I don't know about any challenges. I, Matt I have deals a with list all of here them. On, on my wall. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, like I said, it's we've uh, we've been at this now for several months, and it's. Um, Sometimes it, it feels like we're moving at a snail's pace, but I'll tell you what, every few weeks we, we look at what we've accomplished. It always leads to, to three or four more tasks, but we look at what we've accomplished and it, it's just, uh, it, it's motivating. So um, the challenges though are everything that still remains um, and everything takes time. So that's why, as Brian was saying, 2023 is our goal. 
we certainly could do it sooner. We can have it really sooner. Uh, it, and it'll take more than just money. It'll take uh, assistance in, in different areas, um, production areas, administrative areas, um, uh, assistance with rights and permissions, um, so many details. Um, money sure helps. And um, I'm, one of the recent accomplishments is we've established a fiscal sponsor. So now every donation is tax deductible. Fantastic. And you can give from your mobile phone on Venmo. Like right now? <laughs> Everyone grab your phone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, really. And any, any amount uh, is very much appreciated. Yeah. So, uh, How Venmo, can people find out more about that? And uh, where yeah. can they go to take a look at that? Um, our website is choralsinging.org. And there uh, on the main page, uh, there's information about um, donating. Uh, you can subscribe to our newsletter, which I highly recommend uh, because we're, we're putting out behind the scenes, uh, advance notice, you know, fun, exciting things. Um, and to add to that, Matt, um, yeah. so, and part of the reason for that, I mentioned that we're, we're trying to keep people's attention for the next you know, year and a half here. We will be releasing parts of interviews, uh, sequences of the film, things like that, that will just kind of whet your appetite for more along the way. So you definitely want to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to our newsletter so you can keep in touch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly. What has been the response from the community so far from the general members of the choral community? What have you heard individually, each of you in your, in your respective roles? Jerry? We need, we need it now. <laughs> That's what I've heard from people over and over again. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, is uh, it's warmed my heart. I was in tears when I finished watching the teaser. I, I can't wait to see more. Yeah. Where can we watch it? When will yeah. it? Yeah. When, yeah. Um, and thank you. And there's been yeah. many, many thank yous. Mm -hmm. A lot of gratitude. Um, and because, you know, like Jerry said, we're, we want to do this right. There, we're not cutting corners, um, and uh, and that's uh, so important. You know, one of the challenges is um, we made the initial teaser, and we we've made a, an additional kind of fundraising trailer that's going to be debuting soon, and <clears throat> we're, we're trying to do our best with these. And it looks it 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 looks like we have money that we've thrown into this film. <laughs> If you watch it, really, there has not been a barely a dime thrown at it thus far. I mean, and it is one of those things that we've, from the beginning, had very high goals about the quality that we'd like to produce with this film. And we have very, um, thusly, a very high budget. And um, it's going to be great to, to be able to employ people and include people and have more people involved. And the more people involved, the better it's going to be. But... Um, it, once again, from seeing the, the teaser and such, it, it looks like there's been some money spent on it. But that, that it, it is one of those things where um, we, we are looking forward to being able to finish this with, with the help of other folks. So. so you're accepting donations from anyone who wants to be involved with it. And I think that's such a noble thing. So I encourage people to take a look at that and, and join and be a part of the team that puts this together. We have a question from the audience. Jessica asks, um, how do you think that COVID is going to reshape choral singing in America as we open up the next chapter? Well, I, uh, uh, I sat and uh, heard a sermon not too long ago and where the pastor said, you know, the members of the staff here at the church are saying, oh, why can't we just go back to the old days? Wouldn't it be great when we go back to the old days? And he said, why would we want to? Can't we do it better? And, and I think all of us will think that way. All of us will be technologically better more um, uh, creative with what could happen in rehearsal and what doesn't work so well and what could work so well. And and I, it's hard to imagine that most of our concerts going forward won't be live streamed. We're used to that. We begin to expect that. At Christmas time, I sat in my living room and watched about 15 Christmas concerts from all over the country. It was fantastic because I couldn't go to them, but I could see them and hear them. So I, I think we'll come back, but I I know we'll come back. And I think we'll come back smarter. And uh, as a friend of mine said, you know, when we come back to that first rehearsal, and she was talking about the adult choir camp at Interlochen, when we come back to that first rehearsal, it will be epic. There won't be a dry eye in the room when we can actually sing together. And, and I, I look so forward to that. 
Yeah, I think we all were waiting for that first rehearsal back. And yeah. it's it's amazing how before pre-COVID, there's so many rehearsals every week. You get used to the 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 the, the rehearsals the yeah. uh, every week, and then um, you know when it stops, we we realize that every single person in I would give anything for any one minute of any of those rehearsals right now. Yeah. And that yeah. how special and we're lucky we are to be engaged yeah. with this art form. Yeah, absolutely, no question. Well said. Yeah. Any other observations? What, what have you learned? I, I always find when I do mass, when, when you're involved in massive projects, you learn so much. What are some things you may have learned along the way so far? I knew nothing about doing a documentary. <laughs> let's, go, let's go into that. Like, what, what does it take? What, what, how many people does it take to, to edit, to, to film, to, I mean, what are some of the, the steps to tear, turning this into a reality? Brian, talk. Right? Um... <clears throat> I mean, it can take a lot of people or it can take a few people. As I was mentioning before, the more people you get involved, the higher the... It just means that one person has to do fewer things and they can focus on doing that one thing real well. Um, but it's, um, you know, um, that's a good question. I mean, at this point, it's been a bit of a, um, a three-ring circus here. With <laughs> Whatever we can accomplish, mostly we get done. I did mention, you know, we've had some great film crews from around the nation submit us uh, film, uh, some interview footage. Um, I mean, at some point, I would hope that as there will be musical, I mean, one of the goals of this film is to tell stories and, and, and to inspire and to uh, make sure that everyone's voices are heard. And along the way, we're going to determine ways to do some of those things and opportunities to do some of those things it might be filming a concert you know where you're going to need a small film crew on site and you're going to need an audio recording crew um you know uh, there's probably going to be opportunities where myself or matt will be flying into a city and we'll be like hiring a small group of people that will be doing audio and video and lighting and things of that nature um so like I say, really, a lot of our production is, is to be determined as is kind of that's our next step in the process is just really honing into the script. The script writing is is the largest part um, once we, once we figure out exactly the story we want to tell. Uh, but lots of research, lots of um, hitting your head against the wall and you think you've got it and you think you've got it and then you edit again and then maybe you got it <laughs> and then you share it with someone and they say uh, I don't think you got it and then you go again <laughs> so it's it's you know it's it's a huge it's a humbling task and we just want to make sure we get it right and I'm just, a huge uh, fan of documentary filmmaking I just wanted to ask uh, how does the narrative that you came up when you first start the project you've done multiple documentaries how does the narrative change Has, does it does the perspective change as you go through the process of actually starting to film and put it together I mean I think in a film like this we're, we're going to go in thinking we know what we want to say but the more we talk to people I think that will change I, I, th I think that it will be better than what we thought it was going to be mm -hmm. because of the things that I mean already in the interviews that we've we've had from uh, Dr. Andre Thomas and uh, Dr. Armstrong and there's been so many people that have already talked about and said things that have been so fascinating and touching and um, remarkable and uh, we're just excited to make sure that all those things are crafted in a way to um, highlight all of them. Um, and it's that, like I say, I mean, there's so many, and I, I assume that we're going to have some other resource after this, where if you want to watch the entire Dr. Andre Thomas interview, go to this website, um, because there'll be many topics that don't make it, but are fascinating and need to be heard. So, so. many hours of great uh, interviews. I think we're all mm -hmm. going to look for those at, even after we see the documentary. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah but I, I would not be surprised if we interview oh, well over 100 people for this film before we're said and done, at least. You know, it's a lot like um, conducting a major work for choir and orchestra. If you say you're conducting a Messiah, you're conducting a Brahms Requiem, or wherever or whatever, in, in a documentary, in, in, you account for every single second, and sometimes every half a second. Every one of those has some sort of meaning. Well, it's the same. Yeah. Every note in a Brahms Requiem has a meaning, yeah. has a direction, has a concept. And, and you can do all of the score study in the world and you go to the first rehearsal and, and after about the fifth rehearsal, something different has happened and your mind has changed in a different way and you say, with this group, it, this sounds so beautiful when they do this or no, with this group, we need to take it just a little bit slower. You know, all of that. And it's very much like, it's a work of art. 
you know, it you started and it evolves into something wonderful. And so, I'll Jerry, when, a... when the documentary was done on you, um, how, how, what's, what was it like being part of that and um, and working with a filmmaker to watch that come alive? And I imagine this will be a, a similar project, but so much, you know, so much broader in scope. Uh, and and uh, I, when Brian first showed me like the first version of the documentary, my, my, my hands were sweating. I was so nervous because I, I had not too... seen any of it. And I yours too. <laughs> when I, I, I knew that there was a day and time, a doomsday, when I would have to send Jerry something and just hope that he liked any of it. <laughs> I, I, and it was, it was humbling and daunting, and uh, I was grateful and and uh, amazed at at you know the the things that people said, not necessarily about me, but what they said about growing and and making music and um, um, getting graduate degrees done and all of those sort of things um, it, it it was a sweet process and and Brian stalked me all over the world uh, throughout that year and a half from from Sicily to Pittsburgh to Baton Rouge to Ann Arbor Ann Arbor Ann Arbor um, uh, a whole lot of places, um, Annapolis, um, and it was it was fascinating. And every time, there would be some different aspect that would just fit in where it was good to have it uh, fit in. Yeah, it was a it was a sweet uh, process and uh, one that I'll always treasure. Fantastic. As executive producer, Matthew, what's it like to? Um... To, to, to be involved in all of the, the planning and the, uh, the massive amounts of planning that you're going to have to go through to, to keep all this together and to, to, to map this out. I mean, what's, how has that yeah. been, role been? Well, Jerry just said it's like uh, conducting or preparing a, a masterwork. I think it's that and, and throw a wedding in there <laughs> and uh, some moving parts too, perhaps. Uh, bad weather, a pandemic. Several concerts at Carnegie Hall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, as a, as a person who I know you do so much concert production, you you have con you have choirs coming in from all over the country, and you put them together with the can bring the conductors in. You orchestrate all of that, so I can't imagine someone better than someone who puts them together. Jerry from the artistic, uh, Brian from the filmmaking, and Matthew from the production elements. You really have the complete package of uh, skill sets. I, I thought so too, as soon as I caught wind of this. And uh, Brian mentioned a three ring circus. I kind of like to think of it as a dream team, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, and it's, it, is, it is not just the three of us, uh, yeah, really. The yeah. advisory panel um, has been helpful, very helpful. And, and as much as they can, some are working full time, um, you know, so that's, that's been terrific. But from, from the production standpoint, uh, it's it's well it's been an honor it's been overwhelming at times um but uh, i'm extremely proud uh being a part of this and what we've accomplished so far and it's really just thrilled at what's ahead um so that's and that's what keeps me going i mean i'm i'm probably working 10 11 hour days right now on this documentary series you know that's the other part too is that this is a, a four-part series uh, you know, it, this would be a lot easier if we just said, let's just do an hour, you know, but no. Uh, no. That'd be a dense hour for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And, and I want to share something that kind of goes along with that. Um, when Jerry said yes to agree to me filming something about his final year, I don't know that I've ever been more scared in my life. And, and, and I'm not kidding. I, I actually was very... Um, I was very nervous and because I didn't want to mess it up. You know what I mean? It was one of those things where it's like when someone of this uh, that you respect that well and has had that kind of impact, you want to make sure that you, you do an adequate job and not just an adequate job, but a great job. And, you know, it kind of feels that way with this project mm -hmm. too. I mean, it really does. I mean, it's very humbling and you, you have fears. You think, am I, am I the right person to do this? Um, are we are we going to be creative enough? Are we going to, you know, there's a lot of things that can go through your head in this process. And it's very daunting. And it's so great having a, not only Matt and Jerry 
But um, all the people who are chiming in, I mean, it, it, it truly will be not just our voices, but a, a landscape of the coral field. And, and we're excited to make, uh, have those people involved with us. Really exciting stuff. And there's so much depth to go into. Uh, how far back in history do you go with the beginnings of choral singing? Well, uh, certainly we'll uh, talk about, uh, you know, pilgrims and, and what happened when the pilgrims came. And, and uh, if we can find some, some uh, Native American singing, we'll work on that too. And, and we'll certainly cover uh, African American singing in the country. And, and the 19th century and the late 19th century was a heyday for growing choirs and growing big choral societies and Mormon Tabernacle Choir. And, and before I forget, we're, we're thrilled with how many of these iconic organizations around the country have said, sure, you want to use our archives? Sure. Well, that's fantastic. Have, yeah. Happy to have you use any of the recordings, any photographs. ACDA said, yeah, you have complete access to our archives. You know, of course, America. Oh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. And all the other organizations that we're working with as well. I don't want to leave anybody out. But uh, that's fantastic. The most, I think probably the most difficult is to know how long we can spend in any of those and what we have to move on to something else. Knowing that so many of them could stand an entire hour only on their own, just on them. Mm -hmm. But we'll do our very best. Jerry, what's and, it like? Have you started to dig into some of those archives yet? Have you started to visit them and really dig into the material? Uh, Brian has uh, dug into the uh, ACDA archives. And yeah. go ahead, Brian. Well, I'd say we took a trip in 2020 to Oklahoma. I took a trip and ACDA once again opened their doors. And I left with a couple big bags of DVDs and VHSs. And we just finished digitizing them. And um, also, I spoke with Craig from uh, Boston Game Men's Chorus, and they've offered us their archives. These guys don't even know about that yet. Everyone we talk to just says, <clears throat> please have, have access. Mm -hmm. It's really been great. Well, we have such a rich tradition in the American chorals, yes. and, and it goes back so far. And it's, it's, it's fascinating to see how uh, choral music in America has taken so much from our roots and then kind of swirled it around to a unique American lens. And now, now we can't go to another country without people wanting to engage with our music, our, our mm -hmm. spirituals, our, our, just our deep, rich, um, rich uh, legacy of composers. Yeah, there are so many, even uh, the woman who drives the Uber car that, that takes me to the airport once in a while, she said, oh, you're a choral conductor. Can you come to our concert? I'm in the, I sing in the Lithuanian choir. Would you come to our concert? Well, that's fantastic. You know, there, there's that subculture of all of those other cultures that have brought it with them. We're a nation of immigrants and we didn't leave it behind. You know, the, the, even the pilgrims, they weren't, um, they were educated musicians in many cases and they certainly were educated in other ways as well but that uh, we have a great heritage and we want to share it any parting shots from each of you as we uh, as we wrap up our interview thank you so much for joining us today and um reminded of the people who are listening to uh, to engage with this project go on the website and to uh and consider becoming a member of this team to help uh, promote this and help make this documentary reality and um, i know that music matters is going to make a donation as soon as we get off the air Sweet. Thanks so much, Jason. And, you know, I, I want to make sure that no one's left out and let everyone out there know that uh, Gala has also been extremely helpful, mm -hmm. as well as the National Collegiate Choral Organization uh, and GIA Publishing. Um, mm -hmm. So a special thank you and shout out to them. Uh, if you uh, are involved in an organization within that uh, genre, if you're involved or work within um, uh, one of the uh, denominations like uh, Lutheran church musicians, etc. Please contact us. Uh, we or we'll contact you. But uh, it it would be great to hear from you. Um, children's choir organizations um, and all the way up to uh, advanced uh, and and aged the aging voice. So, thank you. Thanks for that. I my encouragement would be to folks to keep singing. You know, when we come back, jump right in. But even if you can do it before we come back, be patient with those conductors who are doing their very best to make it interesting and to, to give direction even during these uh, the time of silence, uh, you could say now. But then just revel in it when you get back because it'll be a few more months, but it won't be forever. 
Yeah. Time is coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and so thankful for Barbershop. Uh, their organization has been so helpful in so many <laughs> ways. The folks at St. Olaf has offered us footage. I'm just been trying to make sure we don't leave some names out, and I know we still will here. We're going to make sure that um, in our next trailer that a long list of people are credited for all their help. But I think, too, um, poke your, your choral singing neighbor. I think that we live in a day and an age where even if you had intentions of watching this live tonight, something probably pulled you in another direction. And I think that until you poke your choral friends three or four times and make sure that they've followed us, uh, just because I think that's going to be one of the best ways that we get the word out is, is through word of mouth. Word of mouth. That choral community, that grassroots uh, social media is such a powerful motivator and such a powerful like this way to disseminate knowledge, um, information and knowledge. So we get the word out, spread the word to your choral communities, because I think this is such an important topic. And it, if we say that one in six Americans is a singer at an organized co, let's get the other five. <laughs> Good for you. I want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time tonight and for all that each of you do for the choral field. And thank you so much. This is such an important um, event and we can't wait till, to watch it come alive. And I can't wait to have you all back on again to, when we release this uh, documentary. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. A Continued success. Thank you for joining us on Music Matters with Jason Tram. Please remember to subscribe to us and hit that bell icon for the most up-to-date information on upcoming guests and topics. And remember, keep music alive. Good night.